Today we're gonna to be talking about everyday carries, and not just everyday carries, how to keep them minimal and how to keep them efficient. One of the biggest issues that I see with people whenever they get into the EDC world is they just buy too much shit because buying shit is fun, and they buy duplicates of shit that they absolutely never needed in the first place. And the problem with buying duplicates of shit that is super fun and you never needed the shit in the first place is the fact that unfortunately that shit just sits on your nightstand. An everyday carry should be something that goes with you from bag to bag, from situation to situation, whether it's work, a date night, a quick walk around the block, uh, going to the mall, it doesn't matter. Your everyday carry should not be contingent on the opportunities that you have, but should just be a part of you. So I'm gonna take you through what my actual everyday carry items are. Now these may be interchangeable with different ones that I have, but for the most part, the core stays the same and as far as the genres of the gear that I have. And we're gonna walk through that as well as some things to avoid so you're not overspending on stuff you absolutely don't need if you're someone who's doing photography or videography especially in a hobby perspective. A lot of people think that you should figure out what bag you want first. That should be your first decision whenever it comes to your everyday carry because then you can know what you can and can't take with you. And me personally, I don't believe that. I believe that if you're going to be carrying a bag around with you everywhere, it's just going to get in the way. Especially if it's holding a camera with a strap that already has something to hang around you, there's no need. Your pockets have more than enough space and if your everyday carry needs millions of things where you have to have a backpack or a shoulder sling at all times, it may be time to look at your everyday carry and start downsizing instead of trying to move up to larger sizes of bags. For most of us who are using compact camera systems, whether it's some kind of mirrorless or a point and shoot camera, I think you're gonna be fine if you skip that and instead focus on what camera you're gonna use. This right here is Fujifilm's X-Pro3. This is their 23 millimeter F2. And this is a fantastic setup. The Fujifilm lineup is great. Small lenses, small body, and more importantly, it is a lightweight setup that you can carry carry with you at all times. And around there, I have a Royal Leather Works strap. Um, this is made by my buddy Chris, and he does an amazing, amazing job on all of these. Now this has been, uh, this strap goes with me basically on almost every camera. The camera that I'm running and gunning the most during that time will usually get this strap on there, whether it's film, digital, um, full frame, APS-C, it doesn't matter. This is the strap that I'm usually using. If you can just get around just having a camera around your neck instead of having a bag around your shoulder it's going to make your everyday carry a lot easier and again the everyday carry should be a core of things not a giant plethora of stuff that you change depending on what can fit in a single item so of course you're going to have a camera and now that you have that camera we're going to talk about the accessories it just breaks down very simple for me a tool that i can cut something i can listen to music on whatever's going to hold my money and whatever i'm communicating on that is it. Those are the things that are gonna make up my core. Those are always gonna be the things I take with me no matter what. There are two items that I also bring along with me whenever I'm, whether it's going to work or whether it's going along for any kind of photography journey other than that. And that's going to be one single CPL filter and a pen to be able to write stuff down on. You don't realize how much you need those until you absolutely need them, but I'll get into why those are the two alternatives and how I carry those a little bit later on. So the first thing is the phone, and that right there is just a given. Everyone should probably bring their phone with them. You don't know everywhere. You could get lost if you're doing long photo walks, and also being able to communicate with people is a big deal. Nothing special about this. It's just a regular iPhone, but I do have a nice little pop socket on the back as well as I'm using a Moment case, and these are the things that I wanna point out. They take limited space. They are able to be functional for me as well as help keep my stuff safe. The pop socket helps it to where I don't drop anything, um, which actually has become really fun. My wife put me onto this. And the case allows me to hook up Moment lenses on there so that I can be able to create and record content on my phone whenever I don't have a camera. And that has also been a blessing. I use this for recording videos with family, to do like these little family video recaps, as well as to be able to record things for Instagram, uh, record things for, of course, YouTube, take my thumbnails. They're usually taken on this phone. In fact, I think four out of my last five thumbnails and probably about maybe 10 in the last uh, couple of uh, maybe four months have actually been taken on my iPhone, whichever one it is, the mini or this 15 and a moment lens, usually the 58 millimeter or the 18 millimeter. So those are two little things that you can have on you, have on your phone that are very minimal, they're sleek, and they don't get in the way of everything. So that's what I'm communicating on. Now we're going to move into what's holding my money. And what's holding my money is this little Herschel wallet right here. I've had this for about 
three, four years now, my wife actually got this for me and it does its job. It will hold maybe about $10 bills rolled up or high dollar bills, whatever you want to say they are, hundreds, however you're balling uh, in there. It holds about six cards as well. So I have a Costco card, a library card, my ID, and then two credit cards and my debit card. And then it also has in there room for a tile tracker. So if I ever lose my phone or if I ever lose my wallet, I can just ding and I can find out where it's, the, where it's at. I can also look at where the last location of my wallet is in case there's situations like a Couple months ago, we were going to visit family in Brownsville, Texas, and I lost my wallet or forgot my wallet at home. Luckily, I didn't have to think uh, and worry if I left it at a gas station and canceled my cards because I knew where it was. It was in my pants pocket from the day before. But yeah, Herschel wallet, this guy right here, very well worth it. It's been four years. It's hardly showing anywhere. It's broken in really good. Um, good purchase. So next I'm always gonna have something that cuts. Um, and right now it is actually this Gerber pry bar thingy. I'll, I can tell you what it is later. But yeah, it all it is is it has a nice little bottle opener and it has a pry bar at the end. Very sturdy, it has a clip. I make sure they have a clip. Recently I was carrying around a um, Leatherman Bond is what I was bringing with me. Sometimes I have a, a knife, but this one right here does a few more things. I have this flat edge right here for being able to work on cameras if I I need to D screws any kind of mounting stuff I've got that again it's a bottle opener which is nice if you have bottles and then it has two amazing things it has a knife on one side these are very very hard to get open because they're brand new but it has a knife on one side it's nice not the biggest one it's about a two three inch blade very very thin but it will cut and if you sharpen it it'll be fine i'm not a knife snob i'm not a gear snob i want something that's going to work well enough and knowing that if i maintain even the cheapest gear it will be fine i'm not worrying about buy once cry once when this was $15 and I didn't have to pay $100 for an overrated Spyderco blade. The other thing this has on there is uh, scissors. And Gerber actually makes a couple of tools that has really, really good scissors, which is the reason why I continue to use Gerber. I believe their scissors are better. This comes in handy when cutting tape, string, anything at work, day job, anything anywhere else. Really good purchase right here. Gerber did a really good job with this, but this is what I have in my pocket. Again, this is $15. I believe this Herschel wallet was $30 whenever I bought it. This is a really, really good investment. I believe you should always have something that can cut on you, not only for a self-protection uh, kind of standpoint, which I know a lot of people will point out, but you don't really realize how many people need a scissors or need blades uh, during the day to do like the smallest, most mundane task. And it's nice uh, whenever you can come through in the clutch. So. Yeah, I always have something like this. The next thing is something to listen to music on. And of course, if I have an iPhone, I'm going to default to something like this, which is the AirPods. I think this is the generation two or three or whatever it is. Um, and yeah, these are just easy. Pop it in your ear, you're good. I have some little Jaybirds that I have on my keychain in case I ever forget these, um, which are also just a little pop in your ear um, headphones. So yeah, nothing really special about this, but there is something that I've been recently doing. I've seen that more people are going back to their iPods. So I went and dug out my iPods and I bought about a $10, $15 uh, pair of he wired headphones on Amazon. And I've been using that to listen to music. Now, the great thing about this is I was able to keep all of my old pirated music, even though I lost some, but buying CDs from recent art, from artists that have released recent albums is actually really easy and really cheap. You can not only get them used for cheap, usually um, I can get like, let's say a Drake CD or a um, CD from Kings of Leon. They're anywhere from, you know, like $9 if they're brand new to two or $3 from a half price books or an Amazon if they're used and still in good condition. And I'm able to download it onto my computer, put it on this, and then I've got something to listen to no matter what. If I don't want my phone on me to distract me, I can pop in my headphones and put this on the table, put this in my pocket, and I'm good to go. So this is my iPod Classic. I think this is a Gen 6 is what a lot of people call it. And um, it's uh, 120 gigs. And yeah, it still works. It has some kinks. The battery isn't as great as it used to be, but it is nice. Audio quality is great. If I'm feeling funky, this is kind of what I'm using. This is mostly for the days where I don't want to be on my phone while I'm taking a walk. I'll pop my headphones in, walk around, listen to this and be good. Now, another thing I'm using is this, a cassette player. And there's a couple reasons why. Uh, number one, just cool. I mean, it was really dope to see this. Number two, 
Cassettes are really cheap, and me as someone who actually listens to a lot of older music, I've been told that I'm an old soul, which is just, uh, you know, some fancy jargon mumbo jumbo for you're really boring. Um, but a lot of my favorite artists, and a lot of my favorite albums are actually older albums. So I purchased this because I actually found a copy of Marvin Gaye's I Want You on cassette. Now, along with this, I also have some cassettes that I've been burning, uh, basically recording uh um, songs on his tape. So I have on this tape right here, I believe I have some jazz on one side and on the other side, uh, the other 45 minutes is Silk Sonic's album, A Night with Silk Sonic. And um, yeah, it's pretty good. Audio quality is meh, it's okay. Uh, I got a few other cassettes as well. And some, uh, you know, newer artists who uh, release cassettes have some of theirs, but it's just a fun little thing. Same thing, I'll clip this to my belt. I'll walk around, I'll have my headphones in. This is just one of those things when you're feeling more than anything, it's just a fidget toy, which is kind of what the iPod does for me too. It's nice to be able to press play press stop, all the buttons for rewinding and going forward. It's just a nice little fidgety thing. And uh, yeah, it does make me feel absolutely cooler than everyone else, as well as embarrassingly, embarrassingly nerdy whenever people see that I actually have this shit on me. One thing I forgot to mention, watch. Uh, I like this automatic watch from Orient. I got it on sale for $79 about two years ago. I also have an Apple watch, but I mostly use that to be able to track anything from fitness and wearing it work if I wanna be able to see if my wife has texted me any fresh dank memes. Um, and so beyond that, or most of the time, I'm wearing this Orient watch. I love it, it's an automatic watch. It's very plain and simple. I got a new band on it and I'll be looking to get more, but it's lasted me for almost three years now. Um, it is just really nice. It has a date complication on there. And so yeah, a watch, pretty cool. The last two items that I have aren't items that I think everyone needs, but they're items that I actually carry with me more times than not. For work, I wear a lot of shirts with little buttons on the front, and whenever I'm going out and about, I like to wear a vest, or if I have a camera bag, there's a couple things that I'll carry with me extra. Number one is a CPL filter that I have in this BW filter case. The reason why I carry this around is very simple. It fits on all my lenses. This 39 millimeter CPL filter fits the filter size of all the lenses that I carry around and take photos with. And because of that, it just feels like something convenient. I can slip it right here in this pocket. As you see, the size is very, very tiny, even with this nice protective case from BW. And it just it's just something I enjoy. I like the richness of colors using CPL filters. I like being able to get rid of some reflections to be able to have more creative shots. And I like the fact that it can also cut down light by two stops in case I wanna take a portrait and shoot a little bit more wide open or I need it for anything else. And again, it's as simple as taking it off, putting it here or putting it in a pocket. It doesn't really get in the way. This is something that if I know it's going to be sunny, then this turns into being a part of my EDC more than anything else, especially if I go to work because I like to walk a couple of times a day around neighborhoods uh, where I work and take photos of the surrounding areas. And the second thing I don't think everyone needs, but I do carry, is I usually do have a pin of some sorts with me. Recently, it's been the Salami Safari, and this is their fine uh, nib fountain pin. And yeah, it's just a really cool item to have. People think it's nice. People always want to write with it. More importantly, I'm someone who has to sign a lot of documents or write on a lot of documents, and this just makes it a little bit more enjoyable. It has a nice heavy-duty clip. I can push it right here in between my shirt and just clip it on, and I'm good to go and I don't have to worry about it for anything. I carry this with me whenever I go and I'm going to work. And a lot of times more recently, whenever I've been going on photo walks, I take this with me in case I ever have to write down my number or information for two things, people inquiring about um, any kind of services or hey, they need a photographer. Or when people tell me don't take my photo, I'm going to call the police. I will literally give them my phone number uh, because I'm not gonna stand around for that bullshit. You can call me and you guys can track me down if you need me. I don't care. I write down my website. You can say I'm a photographer. So that's what I really like to carry this around for. Um, and yeah, these are basically the things that I carry. That That's it. It doesn't have to be a lot of things to be a cool everyday carry kit. I have something that cuts. I have something that communicates. I have something that holds my money. These three things are usually what's in my pocket. My phone is in my front pocket. My um, my wallet is in my front pocket. This is clipping on the inside of my front pocket. And it's so slim and goes far to the side. And I wear Wrangler jeans that it doesn't get in the way. If I'm listening to any kind of music, this fits in my fifth pocket, uh, which is always where it sits. This will sit on my belt. This can go in just a back pocket or in my hand or in my front pocket. It, it, this isn't big. And this right here is just my camera. 
that's basically all you need. You don't need to buy a whole bunch of stuff in order to have a cool everyday carry. The coolest everyday carries are the ones that you use constantly for day after day after day to where it becomes just a part of you and becomes almost a signature. An everyday carry isn't supposed to be a showstopper. It's supposed to be something that is beneficial to you and helps create a more efficient lifestyle for you by you being able to do tasks as well as any other uh, request a little bit easier that fit into your life that are a little bit more repetitive. So with all that being said, I hope you guys understand what I'm saying. I hope you guys dig the things that I have. If you have any questions, let me know. But uh, other than that, take it light, but take it. Have a good one.